My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in York. Now, yesterday I was asked to talk at a charity ball which had been organized to raise awareness of a condition called POTS. And I thought I'd share some of what I said with all of you because I think some of this may resonate with you. Okay, My talk was entitled POTS, The Remarkable Condition. I won't take up too much of your time, but I do urge you to listen carefully because I am very confident that each and every one of you knows someone who suffers from this condition, but who is still haplessly searching for a diagnosis. POTS is a remarkable condition. I say this for many reasons. It is remarkable because of how prevalent it is in the general population, and yet how little recognition there is for it by the medical profession. It is remarkable in that it tends to affect generally young, otherwise healthy, clean living people whose lives it changes overnight. It is remarkable on how debilitating it is for the sufferer and yet how invisible it is to the outsider. It is remarkable that it affects virtually every system of the body and patients spend months and months seeing every specialist for every system and yet remain undiagnosed for years. It is remarkable that it was first described in 1871 and yet to this date we do not recognize it or have an effective cure for it. POTS stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. When a patient with this condition stands up or even sits up, they will find that their heart rate shoots up precipitously and they will develop very fast and unsettling heart palpitations. These may be accompanied with a sensation of severe dizziness and even blackouts. Given the nature of these symptoms, patients understandably avoid standing up and this results in deconditioning, poor performance at work and at school, social isolation because they simply can't do what they would like to with their friends and family, and a huge decline in their overall quality of life. These symptoms can develop overnight and we don't know why, but we believe that it is perhaps a genetic vulnerability that is triggered by an infection or trauma or a period of prolonged bed rest and deconditioning. I actually believe that the majority of patients with long COVID probably have POTS, which was triggered by the infection. As our awareness has improved, it is becoming apparent that this is not just a condition which manifests when people stand. It affects them even when they're not standing. We now think of POTS as a disequilibrium between the flight and fight system and the rest and digest systems. These patients are always in flight and fight mode and never in rest and digest mode. They're always tired and wired. They never have a good night's sleep. They're always fatigued. They're troubled with the most horrible disabling brain fog. They're always bloated and nauseous because their digestion is left impaired. Unfortunately, when these patients go to see their doctor, the doctor does not find anything structurally wrong and therefore after repeated visits asking for help, they are branded as having anxiety or being crazy. This lack of empathy and support makes everything worse and patients can spend several years being unfairly stigmatized and rejected in this manner by the medical profession, by their colleagues and even by their family members. For me, as a human being, as a doctor, as someone who looks after these patients, this is heartbreaking. The reality is that with engagement, empathy, education and empowerment, patients do get much better. I don't think I have come across a single patient with POTS who hasn't broken down in tears in my clinic when I've told them that I know what is going on with them and I would be willing to help them. Everyone says the same thing. Thank God someone believes me. Whilst POTS is not a curable condition, it is not dangerous, and with lifestyle modifications, physiotherapy, 
and medications to reduce adrenaline surges in the body, many patients can start functioning again. They can go back to work, they can have families, and they can interact with friends. One of my patients was a 17-year-old girl who'd been in a wheelchair for two years, and this year she will be riding her horse in an international competition after just a year of treatment. For me, working with and treating patients with POTS and seeing them flourish after years of being in a dark and lonely place is far more rewarding than anything else I've ever done as a doctor. At present, I get about four patients a day coming to me with suspected POTS, and I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. Thankfully, we now have a wonderful organisation, POTS UK, which is run by like-minded healthcare professionals who are committed to raising awareness of this condition. For those of you who are interested in knowing more, please do have a look at their website, potsuk.org. At the beginning of this talk, I described POTS as a remarkable condition. It is remarkable for one more reason. It seems to affect remarkable people. Remarkable people like my patients Sam and Ruth and Sammy and Jade, who battle with their own symptoms with an indomitable resilience every minute and every day. Remarkable people like Jasmine and Marie and Craig, who feel broken every day and yet refuse to break. Remarkable people like the girl yesterday who for years had been shunned by the medical profession and still found the generosity and energy to organize a charity event to raise money to help fellow sufferers. It is these remarkable people who have helped me realize that a good doctor should be patient-centered rather than protocol-centered. It is these remarkable people that made me recognize that a good doctor should learn by listening to patients rather than relying on what he has read in an outdated textbook. It is these remarkable patients that make me see that all a patient wants is to be treated like a human being and more importantly, by a human being. It is these remarkable people that made me understand that medicine without humanity is no medicine at all. Thank you.